Now here's your host, Tom Dorado. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. You know, you've heard us say over the years, college basketball season's kind of like running a marathon. You have some good miles, you have some miles that put you to a test. Since our last visit, we've experienced both. We played very well in uh, the game earlier in the week down at uh, Waco, beat the Baylor Bears by 13. I thought coming home to play the University of Oklahoma, which is always a big game, they call it the Bedlam Series, that we would really play well, and we did at the defensive end. We played about as well as we can play, uh, held them to 53 points. They only had one offensive rebound, and uh, if you just look at the, st the stats from a defensive standpoint, you'd say, well, you won the game. Right, right. But they didn't realize we'd shoot 28%. And uh, not only shoot poorly, but execute so poorly. I tell you, it was a nightmare. Uh, I don't believe I've had a team play that poorly at, at the offensive end since I was coaching back at Tulsa Central High School, and that was a long time ago. you got a good memory. You know, that offensive inconsistency is putting a lot of stress on the rest of the game. Well, it uh, just makes it so much more difficult on the defense. If the defense knows that uh, you can't score and you got to stop the, other, the opponent that much more, it's just uh, awfully hard. So... I hope that we can get this thing straightened out. I've just been real disappointed in our basketball team because of the inconsistent play at the offensive end. And, uh, you know, we're right here in the middle of the season, and it's pretty hard to start all over. So uh, we'll just continue to work hard on the practice court and see if we can't get it corrected. We're going to take a look at an up-and-down week when the Eddie Sutton Show continues in a moment. Well, they had their hard hats on that night, no question. We're going to have a feature on the groundbreaking ceremony later in the show. But, Eddie, the first stop last week was Waco, as you said, and for the umpteenth time, we fell behind and had to play catch-up. Well, we had been down there the last two years and lost two heartbreakers, and so uh, this time uh, we uh, started out, we hit the first basket of the game, but uh, after that, uh, Baylor hit some good shots, and we got down, I think it was 20 to 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems like we've had to do that a lot this year. We never really jump on anyone like a lot of our ball clubs have been able to do in the past where we get out on them and make them come to us. What people that never played basketball might not understand, when you're ahead, uh, it just seems like that basket's a lot bigger and it's easier to hit. When you're behind, it seems like it sometimes shrivels up on you and uh, that's why it's so important to get ahead in a basketball game. But uh, you gotta give them credit. I thought their team hit some big shots early, but. Just before halftime, uh, we changed uh, our defense and started pressing them, and I thought that was a big turnover in the in the ball game. And once we got ahead, well, then they were they were chasing us the rest of the night. Yeah, we're going to see that as this first half unfolds. And the Cowboys actually went on a 13 to two run over the last 2:43 to uh, break away from a nine point deficit. And again, the turnovers that they had played into uh, that particular run. Well, it did. We uh, forced them into a lot of miscues, and we were able to convert them. Uh, Desmond Mason had one of the outstanding games that uh, Cowboys had in the nine years that I've been here. He had 32 points and 10 rebounds and uh, just played a magnificent ball game. You know, the rest of his line, too, you mentioned the 32 points, 10 rebounds. He also had two assists, one block, three steals, no turnovers, four or five from three-point range, all in 35 minutes. You can't do much more than that. Well, you can, and, uh, you know, uh, he was uh, voted the Big 12 Player of the Week. And uh, the week before, Adrian Peterson was a Big 12 Player of the Week, and I know what Adrian has struggled uh, all three games. And uh, the other night, uh, Desmond, after this magnificent performance, didn't play that well against OU. So I don't know whether that's a, a good thing to have happen to you or not. It's like the kiss of death, the way uh, our guys two, pl two played after uh, uh, after winning the award. 41-32, the Cowboys up top at halftime. We're in the second half, and you kept the pressure on again. Mason and Atkins kind of leading the way here. Look at that rebound by Atkins. Pretty good, huh? Great uh, rebound, and it goes back and puts it up for a guard. He has a wonderful jumping ability. Actually, we took a 17-point lead later when Mason hit a slam that put us up 61-44, and from that point on, the Cowboys had this one locked up. And like I said, we had lost the uh, two previous years down here and two heartbreakers. I think one of them went triple overtime, so it was our time to, to beat the Bears. Yeah, we uh, discussed those hallway discussions after the game. Look at that slam by Mason, one of many he's had this year. 
uh, the last two years, and those were not pleasant afternoons that we spent in that hallway. No, you, that's true. There's uh, Glennon Alexander and hitting uh, a tray. Talk about Glendon. Now, Glendon got off to a quick start, had the stomach virus, and there you see uh, Desmond re-aggravating that thumb injury. He did this all with a thumb injury, uh, but Glendon has, has been a little bit slowed with a knee injury as well. Well, he, he keeps having, uh, you know, knee problems. In this particular game, he had been uh, had a touch of the flu and didn't feel that, that uh, you know, 100%. But uh, we have to watch uh, his knee. You know, he's had surgery twice on that knee, and if you work him too hard in practice, sometimes the thing has a tendency to, to uh, balloon up, swell up, and, uh, you know, we just have to rest him every once in a while. But, boy, he's a welcome addition. He's been a very, very good player for us since he became eligible at semester. Well, as you mentioned, a five-game win streak, a raucous home crowd. As a staff, you thought everything was in place for a strong showing against Oklahoma. The only thing you couldn't predict was 28% uh, shooting from the floor. Well, when you take uh, Peterson, Atkins, and Mason, three of our top players, and they go seven for 32 from the field, uh, you know you're going to have a tough night. There's a good uh, penetrating dribble by Atkins, and one of the few easy shots we got on a feed to uh, uh, Frederick. It's one of the few times, actually, that either the dribble got inside the zone or a pass got inside the zone. There's uh, Desmond missing an easy shot, but he follows it up and tips it in. You addressed this in the post-game comments. Uh, I know people asking this, good penetration, a good move by Pete. But against the zone, you've got to be paid. You've got to move them around, and you've got to get in that black area somewhere to make something happen inside out. There's a great penetrating dribble by Gottlieb, a kickoff to Alexander, but what you said is true. To beat a zone, you have to have patience because most of the time it takes a little longer to get the shot that you're looking for than it does against man defense. That's Alex Weber hitting about a 15-footer. I thought Alex and Frederick mm -hmm. uh, are two guys that play in the pivot. I thought they had a pretty good ball game, but it was our perimeter players that uh, had a tough tough evening. And we were talking before the show, uh, certainly it depends on which side of the fence you're, you're looking at this game from, and, and Oklahoma's defense was good, there's no question about that, but execution kind of played into the hands of that effectiveness. Well, we just came down and uh, shot the ball entirely too quickly, uh, and uh, oftentimes took what we call marginal or bad shots. In fact, out of the 53 shots uh, we took, when we graded the film, 17 of them were shots that uh, we wouldn't want mm. our players to take. So that in itself is enough to get you beat against a good basketball team. 15 to 5 run, and you're watching some of that right here. Frederick Johnson was in the middle of that run, as was Joe Atkins, but six straight threes to put points on the board, and that's that's tough living. Sometimes they just don't go in. Well, you got to have a balance between an inside attack and, and a perimeter game, and. And in this particular game, we did not have that. Uh, we ended up uh, shooting, uh, I think, uh, 29 out of our 53 mm -hmm. shots were from beyond the arc, and that's not good balance. Even if you're hitting, hitting those shots, and that's okay. But you got to get some easier baskets down that paint, and we just didn't get very many of them. Well, we got it back to 39, 36. Uh, crowd was into it, certainly the players, and it, it was almost like we just hit a wall for the next two minutes. Oh, the crowd was outstanding. I tell you, you know, they did everything possible to help us win. And, you know, you see the final score, 54-43. That's the lowest number of points that an Oklahoma State team had scored since 1976. Okay, I know you've been asked this quickly. You've had a couple of days to practice since that game. The mental outlook is we get ready for Sunday's noon game against Texas Tech. Well, I think, uh, as I said before, I think players recover quicker than coaches do sometimes. But uh, I think they realize it's one game. Uh, we have a chance to redeem ourselves when we go back south to play the University of Oklahoma in February. And you can't be uh, dwelling on that. You've got to look forward to Texas Tech and Baylor and Texas, our uh, three uh, opponents coming up. So I think the players are in good spirits. And I think that uh, we're going to love it and play a good ball game. Well, earlier in the day on Bedlam Tuesday, we held a historic groundbreaking. We'll tell you all about it on this week's Off the Court Feature. For those of us who have been part of Oklahoma State for a long, long time, Tuesday's Athletic Center groundbreaking was indeed something special. A dream that many thought would never be realized became a reality this past week.
Oklahoma State University officials broke ground this past Tuesday on its newest athletic facility, calling it the largest and most ambitious capital project in the history of the university. The OSU Athletic Center, which will be the home of a new Gallagher Ibar Arena, is scheduled for completion for the 2000-2001 seasons. OSU Athletic Director Terry Don Phillips and President James Halligan were among those participating in the groundbreaking ceremonies. It's going to be a magnificent athletic center. It's going to touch upon the lives of every student athlete that we have. The Gallagher Iba Arena is going to be transformed into a very modern, state-of-the-art, fan-friendly arena. I said fan-friendly, I didn't say visitor-friendly. <laughs> But the students step forward first to say, we'll support. <laughs> that vote of 30 to, three, 30 to 3 in the Student Senate made all the difference in the world to the history of this institution. And as I said at the time, we'll put up a plaque in the Hall of Honor to the students of OSU for stepping forward first to provide leadership for this program and this improvement that we're going to have here. A new and expanded Gallagher Iber Arena is just part of the new athletic center. With a seating capacity exceeding 13,000, the new arena, in fact the entire facility, will be among the finest in the nation. We have a commitment to put you in the best position that we very possibly can for you to have success as a student and for you to have success as an athlete. And that's what this athletic center is all about. The $51 million facility will encompass the existing football coaches building and provide skybox seating overlooking both Lewis Field and the basketball court. In addition to expanded offices, training facilities for all sports, weight rooms, recruiting areas, practice spaces, new wrestling facilities, an academic counseling center will also be included. Also included in the new facility will be Heritage Hall, an expansive area that will document and pay tribute to Oklahoma State's outstanding athletic tradition. The athletic center project would not have been possible without the support of many groups. So salute to the students, then we need to salute the citizens of Stillwater. They step forward also. In order for us to be successful, it is terribly important that we have good relationships with the city of Stillwater, and certainly the mayor has been involved in that. The, cities, the citizens, as you know, voted for this project, and so we're deeply indebted to them, and we wouldn't be here as successful as we are today without the citizens of Stillwater and the leadership that the city has provided with respect to this project. Then there's so many of you who have been so generous to us on this effort. There are very special people in the audience today who have contributed significantly to this effort and we are deeply in their debt. They will make a difference and all of you will make a difference to OSU. Nearly 11,000 of the more than 13,000 seats in the expanded arena have already been reserved. Anyone interested in securing tickets for Cowboy basketball in the 2000-2001 season and beyond should call 405 744-7301 for details. That last picture is about the way I felt after the Oklahoma game. <laughs> I was going to say, that wasn't you, was it? But this facility is really going to be something special. It is going to be unique, and it's uh, badly needed not only for basketball but for uh, all sports because it is going to touch all of our student athletes. And I'm just thrilled that uh, in two years we're going to have a brand new facility. It's going to be a little rough uh, the next two years uh, for practice sessions and for other reasons, but uh, when it's done, I think all of us that uh, love Oklahoma State University will be very proud of it. Well, the notebook, our Ask the Coach feature, and another road trip. We have a lot to still talk about. You stay with us. We're back after this brief timeout. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. I'm Meredith Myers. And I'm April Fisher. Go Pugs! Go Cowboys! <laughs> Welcome back to the show, Eddie. Let's hit the notebook right off the bat. We've got some interesting items for your uh, discussion. First one, what's the deal? It's my impression, an impression of a lot of people, that we're seeing ugly basketball around the country. Is that true? 
Well, it's uh, whether you uh, like uh, real up and down basketball or tough nose, hard uh, defense. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I think that what's happened, Tom, is this. I think defenses are better, and especially when you get into conference play, all assistant coaches have a, you know, a scouting report on the other ball club. I mean, you know what every team is going to do, and you go out there and practice and you work on it, and I think that makes for ugly games. Now, I don't think any game can be as ugly as that last one we played with the University of Oklahoma. That was an ugly game, and if I'd have been home, I might have turned it off. I know one thing for sure to a coach. There's no ugly W's, none whatsoever. Next item, green grass. We appear to have more and more youngsters transfer, especially in mid-semester, because perhaps they think they're going to get more playing time at another school. I think that's the reason that most young men uh, or young women decide to go elsewhere. Uh, we lost two players this week, uh, Mike Johnson and Scott Robies, and uh, I think both of them were very hesitant about leaving. Uh, they loved Oklahoma State. They liked the coaches, their teammates, but they felt like that uh, – uh, maybe they could find a place where they would be able to play uh, more than they would play here at Oklahoma State. Uh, Mike was redshirting. Scott had had uh, limited action. Uh, they can leave it semester, lay out the spring semester, the fall semester, and uh, then for Scott, he'd have a year and a half left. For Mike, two and a half years. And, you know, I wished him the, the very best. We hate to see him leave because they were both not only uh, good basketball players, but quality young men, good students. Uh, represent Oklahoma State well. But I think you're going to see more and more of that. I think what happens many times, assistant coaches, when you go recruiting, and, and I tell our assistants to try not to do that, but uh, they go and they spin a yarn and uh, maybe tell uh, a recruit that he's going to play maybe quicker mm -hmm. than he can. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times young men lose their patience and decide to go elsewhere. You know, all you coaches on this level, highly competitive once that ball goes up. But you unified in another battle, and that's our next item on the notebook. Well, that's coaches versus cancer. Uh, you know, the coaches have uh, pulled together, and I think that uh, we've raised several million dollars for cancer research. Uh, I would hope that our fans will participate. We already have a lot of them, but I would like to see more uh, participate in this project. For every three-pointer that we hit, you can pledge a certain mm -hmm. amount of money, and uh, then at the end of the year, well, uh, all that money is... Uh, uh, put together and we submit it to uh, the American Cancer Society and it's really been a, a, a project that everybody's really stepped forward across the nation. Very few people uh, don't have a relative or a friend who uh, has fought the uh, battle uh, with cancer so uh, any of our fans that might be listening I hope you'll participate in this project. Well it's time for this week's internet question from oakstate.com it's presented by Southwestern Bell and it has to do with schedules and it has to do with the likes of as we see, NC State, North Carolina, Duke. Craig, that's a good question. Uh, I would like to schedule Duke, North Carolina, North Carolina State. I uh, would love to play a home-and-home -home schedule, and maybe with the new arena, when we get it completed, we'll be able to schedule uh, teams like that. Right now, they're very hesitant about coming to uh, gallagher Ive as it is, because it isn't an easy place to win for the visiting team. Well, if you have a question for Eddie Sutton that you want answered on the show, log on to Oklahoma State's official athletic website at oakstate.com. Participate in the Southwestern Bell Ask Coach Sutton Contest. Now, another road trip on tap. Another road trip to Texas Tech, and they are playing well right now. They are playing well. Of course, uh, James Dickey was my assistant for eight years, and his brother Randall's on my staff. It's a game uh, I don't think either one of us like to play, but since they're in our league, we have to play them at least twice a year. Uh, we swept the series last year. Uh, this year it's going to be a little more difficult. They've got a great uh, uh, combination guard to set in, in Young and Bonovich. Mm -hmm. They're both shooting over 40% from three-point range. They're coming off a big win over uh, Baylor this last week. Uh, so it'll be a tough, uh, a tough game. It's uh, going to be a, kind of an early matinee game a because game. it uh, starts at 12 o'clock. So we'll have to get up early, but at least we'll get home. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show. We invite you back next week. For Eddie Sutton, our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody.